Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be pulling apart the Forester to find that oil leak. Where do you think it's coming from? Comment down below. Let's get into it. Alright guys, last episode on the Forester, we went for a drive. We put some petrol in it, and when I left the petrol station, there was a puddle of oil. Now, I did have a look under the car at the petrol station, and it was dripping probably once every two to three seconds. And that's a pretty bad leak. So, I've had a look under here. You can't really see it, but I'll jack it up. There is a puddle under the car. I believe it might be the oil drain from one of the turbos, or where they both join together, and that might be the issue. So, let's jack it up and have a good look. Also, when I was at the petrol station, um, when I moved the car, there was a bit of plastic. It was actually <laughs> the space that I put there. Not thinking, because it's one of these uh, rails. I thought, ah, oh, it might get a little warm, but not exhaust hot. I just wasn't thinking. And now, this is what it looks like. So, awesome. So, I've got it jacked up. Let's have a quick look at the puddle. So this was dry when I took this out. So yeah, we've got a good leak. All right, decent amount. So I don't know if it's just run down to there because if that's how the ground is. We've got a bit of oil here. With oil here. Pretty sure it's not steering. Let's try on this side. Hmm. Alright, this is really hard to show you guys. But can you see that fitting? In Ugh. A and fitting there, that's the oil return. On that oil return, there is a drip of coolant. So the coolant is above it, the banjo, and that's got a drip. So we've got some leakage of coolant. Okay, so that T piece for the oil drain looks a bit wet. Then I went down here to this boot, I'm like, this boot looks wet. And I touched it, the whole thing moved, which it shouldn't. So that, <laughs> that cable tie isn't tight enough. So I can get another one on there. Um, yeah. That's definitely oil. Also looks like my cam seals are, are leaking on both sides. What's that like? Which is... isn't too bad. Like, I'm, I need to get it out to do the cams so they will get replaced. Alright. Also one thing I would definitely be checking out when I get the engine out is the power steering lines because they are pretty close to the up pipe if not on it and I don't want them to get rubbed through, so we'll check the condition of them, and if they're um, looking like they're starting to rub, we'll just go back to the hard lines, and maybe even just up to here, and like get a flaring tool in, like what I've done with the fuel line over here, if you've got adapters, they can go into AN, so maybe I'll do that, so... You can make it still look neat up here. But this is the power steering here and down there. But the hard lines come up like across the rail and go under where the the, uh, the coolant reservoir was and just comes up and gets in the way. So if it's rubbing, we'll go hard lines until about here and then yeah, we'll just flare them into that. Anyways. Um, yeah, this 
heat type isn't really good <laughs> but at the moment it's better than nothing I'm going to take this shield off because that's just to hide the wastegate so we'll get that off it's all melted anyway so yeah the tape started to peel off it's not sticky anymore tried to burn it's uh could have been bad. All right, let's get that little mount off. All right, so I was just straddling the engine, looking down, and looking at the oil drains on the turbos, like through down there. I thought I saw a little drip. So it looks like it's coming from the TDO5. Like it might be the seal onto the turbo, onto the cartridge. And then I looked this way, I'm like, this is how I did the the clamp up to the drain. I don't know if you can see all the way through down there, I'll zoom in for you. But I had a straight blade screwdriver through here and did it up. I'm looking at it, I'm like trying to reach it. And then I noticed about an inch down. It's freaking kinked. Ah. <laughs> um. Sweet. <laughs> it's hard to get to. Like, all of it's got to come off. Alright, so in a couple of weeks, guys, I'm going to be detailing my sister's RS Clio. If you don't know what that is, I'll put up a picture. Because um, she's trying to sell it. I don't want to be pulling the engine out, so I'm going to see if I can pull off the GT35 and the TDO5 together because they are sealed together on the exhaust. I don't want to break that, so <laughs> let's see if I can do that. So I'm going to have to take the dump off, uh, I'll take the screw and pop off, I'll take the vacuums off, the oil feeds, the water to it cooler pipe and see if we can take that whole system off together and then we can probably work out fixing some issues with that as well anyway <laughs> let's see if i can do it all right guys um at this point i've got the dumper i've got the wastegate dump off intercooler pipe off we have taken the oil feed off both taken the water off the tdo5 plug that that's the way that the water goes comes up through the turbos and then into here if you didn't know so I've got the three bolts really to get out and I'll have to loosen off the oil drain for the TDO5 so we've got vacuums they're all undone it's not gonna get hooked around the fuel rail this one's off up here um, yeah, a lot of spaghetti. Um, so what I worked out was the internal gate had actually moved and the arm was, and still is, uh, a little, a little loose. So that would not help with uh, building some boost. But, uh, we need to find that oil leak mainly. All right, keep at it. All right, guys, here's one for you. That uh, hose clamp on the drain. It wasn't tight. All right, so the compound system is uh, off. See that it was just dripping down into the up pipe. Okay, so we've got a bit of a mess there. You might be able to see now that there was a kink in that. No, it's pretty dark. But right, it's about halfway down. So we're gonna sort that out. Um here's the system off the car. Managed to get it all off. So what I need to do is I want to put it back on like this I just need to lift the back up so I can slide a nut through 
through there and then do that one up first then I can do these front ones this internal gate it's a bit loose thought I did a, a good enough bracket but obviously not so I might actually put this back on like this because <laughs> I just tighten these two up which I struggled to get to in the car so if I could do it this way that'd be awesome so we've got some water running down to here so we've got to figure out that all right guys so I popped the clip off the internal gate and that's all the way open and this is all the way closed now it doesn't even line up so this arm it's actually there so <laughs> the internal gate was open the whole time and that's why we weren't building boost oh my god all right so let's shorten this it's always pulling on it and yeah awesome <laughs> all right guys sorry i haven't got the light up here it's underneath the car at the moment because i'm going to be taking this up up pipe off because the t-piece for the drain is actually loose so I'll get that up up out. We'll have a closer look at that. Maybe, yeah, it's just loose. Hasn't um, sealed properly. And that's why it was leaking. Because it seemed to be not straight away. Like the oil's got to come through and like back up a little bit. Even though it shouldn't really be backing up. But it is because I've got two drains going into one. So yeah, we've got the kink. Then looks like the two piece is loose too. So we'll get this out of the way. Alright guys, so I have to drop the manifold to get the up pipe out. Yes, it's all stock. So, question is, aftermarket up pipe, so it's skinnier. So we're having all that heat shield cat stuff on it. Because it's a rubbing. So, you can see here been rubbing on that one see we've got a bit of play there that's the oil drain so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll chop this cable tie here and I'll have a look at this because it's pretty oily so this did have a leak at the top so it may have oil all the way through it but, um, yeah I've got to make sure this is tight so We'll get this hose off as well. All right, guys. So this is the up pipe from my equal length or very close to equal length. This is a cheap one. Anyways, um, the standard up pipe is pretty much the length to here. So yeah, pretty, pretty bang on with the angle as well. So my thoughts are chop it there and put a flange on it onto checking these lines I think the power steering is good if we don't have any more issues with it also I think this might be kinking it a little bit there I don't have enough to do that again I don't think anyway Chop that cable tie, have a look at that drain. We will replace this because there's a join there and this is all filled up with oil. So we'll get a proper heat sleeve for that as well. All right guys, finally got the little drain off the TDO5's oil drain and you can see, kinked. Probably won't be able to see in there but it's closed up about half of it. it does swivel but it's cracked at the top and the hose clamp wasn't tight at the top either so maybe it was coming up and out i'm not sure um still investigating down there 
see what's going on. Uh, maybe the T piece, the join onto the head was a bit loose. All right, so I was, just took the lamp off and where it was kinked, I just pulled it back a bit and it split. So maybe it was weeping out of there. All right, so the dash 10 that you see down there. Yeah, that's all dry. So there's no leaks from that. So have a look at the T piece just here and it was a little bit loose but it was dry here so my guess is actually it's the GT 35s that was leaking and the TD05 but up the top so I don't think it was this piece at all I think it was everything that went on to this so this 90 degree I think that was leaking from this here and the TDO5s was leaking out the top and out that crack there. <sighs> Alright, um, I guess so I can put this back on. Alright, so I just went inside for a little bit, like five minutes. Um, I've got the T piece back on, it's not tight. I'm gonna look up if we, if I can get a flange for here to make that one and uh, that I might call it for today. I need to make up another drain for the GT35. All right guys, so I ordered these flanges yesterday and I got them today, so it's pretty damn quick. So now we can make our custom up pipe. So that's sweet, it's gonna be next episode. And also I picked up a heat sleeve for the GT35's oil return. So we should be good with that. And that'll be next episode as well. So guys, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button to check out what's gonna be going on with this Forester. And I'll be catching you next time when we get it all back together. Thanks for watching, bye.